Thank you for tuning in to our YouTube channel this week, the Mount Sinai Missionary Baptist Church of Memphis Incorporated, located at 1667 South Lauderdale Street. Uh, we pray that you've had a wonderful week and overcame the problems that beset you, uh, if there were any. Uh, our text for this week is found in Isaiah chapter 4, verse 5 and 6. But allow me to offer you a reminder of how we got to this point uh, by saying that we, we are preaching a series titled, Show Me Me. God, show me me. And it's from Isaiah chapter uh, 1 through 5, and we're on chapter 4 now. Uh, and then we'll be going to the New Testament and continuing where Paul says, O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me? Uh, from this body of sin. I thank God through Christ Jesus. Uh, but for now, uh, so far we've uh, dealt with verse 1. Uh, we started on April 19th uh, and continued with part 2 on the 26th of April that talked about uh, trusting Jesus in that day. And it concerns seven women willing to marry one man. And then uh, uh, May 3rd, we went to verse 2 that dealt with the beauty and glory of God's people. And we took a pause for the cause on May 10th for Mother's Day. And then verse three and four on May 17th that dealt with the holiness and purity of God's people. And now we're on verse five and six today dealing with the preservation and safety of God's people. Let's look at our text uh, from the message version of Isaiah chapter four, verse five and six. It reads, then God will bring back the ancient pillar of cloud by day and the pillar of fire by night and mark Mount Zion and everyone in it with his glorious presence, his enormous protective presence. Shade from the burning sun and shelter from the driving rain. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, thank you for preserving us and keeping us safe from generation to generation. We thank you for keeping us e e these days from the coronavirus uh, that we're plagued with. Uh, you've done a fantastic job and we praise your holy name for your keeping power. We pray now that you would show us the value that we have in your sight through your word as we share uh, in this message today. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Everyone likes to feel as though they are of value to somebody. We find sweet rest at night when we know that uh, we've done something during the day that helped someone along their way. There's nobody that can make a nobody like us feel like we are somebody like God can. There is none that loves sinners like what is found in Romans chapter 5, verse 6 through 8. It reads, For when we were yet without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet peradventure, for a good man, some would even dare to die. But God commanded his love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. The prophet Isaiah speaks of a time in the future when God will dwell with his people as when he led them uh, through the wilderness. Isaiah chapter four, verse five, part of our text, uh, read it again, uh, says, then God will bring back the ancient pillar of cloud by day and the pillar of fire by night and mark Mount Zion and everyone in it with his glorious uh, presence and with his enormous protective presence. The pillar of cloud by day and the pillar of fire by night symbolize God's presence in a way that ensured the Israelites that God was with them 24 seven. Hebrews 13 and five says, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. And preservation is the process of preserving something or keeping something because 
its deemed value. We are of great value to God. Isaiah chapter 25, uh, uh, there we learn of the preservation or protection of those that had survived persecution and tribulation in exile. Isaiah 26 and 3 says, Thou shalt keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusted in thee. One of the great benefits of being preserved by God is perfect peace. Isaiah 26 and 3 says, The Lord keeps uh, in true peace the mindset that consistent, con consistently trust in him. Let me read that again. The Lord keeps in true peace the mindset that consistently trust in him. We who are God's peculiar treasure must have the right source in order to have true peace. True peace does not depend on what is happening to you, nor does it depend on what's going on around you. We're in a period when it seems like uh, sometime all hell is breaking loose from the White House all the way to the outhouse. But those whose mind is stayed on the Lord, God will keep us in perfect peace. True peace depends on what's on the inside of us. John chapter 4, verse 27, and this is the Living Bible version, says, I am leaving you with a gift, peace of mind and heart. And the peace I give isn't fragile like the peace the world gives. So don't be troubled or be afraid. With the peace that Jesus gives us, we can sleep even through a storm that is raging in our lives. If you should get a little skittish in your personal storms of life, I suggest you remember that Jesus' peace allowed him to sleep in a storm. And if it allowed him to sleep in a storm and we have his peace, we can sleep in the middle of a storm. So, all you have to do, if you get a little skittish, is do what his disciples did. They went and found him, and he was near. And they woke him up and reminded him that they were about to perish. They were telling him something he already knew. But how can you perish, how can you die with life itself on board? Remember that Jesus woke up and said, answered that question when they asked him, carest thou not that we perish? He does care about us. First Peter five and seven said, casting all your anxieties on him because he cares for you. Matthew six and 24 says, no one can serve two masters for either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and wealth. In other words, our devotion, our commitment must be to the Lord God Almighty because he's the true and living God that won't fail us. The problem that arises if we try to share our devotion is that things will get all mixed up in our minds. If we're trusting the Lord on Sunday and then trusting other things, ourselves and other folks and other things, our jobs and our bank account through the week, then Things can get confusing to us. We, 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 when we should be running to the Lord, we'll be trusting in other things. We'll get confused and forget to look to the hill from whence cometh our help. There is a peace 
that is beyond our comprehension. And it is the peace of God. Philippians 4 and 7 says, and the peace of God, which surpasses all comprehension, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Take note that Paul says to the Philippian church, it's not what's on the outside that, that will, 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 will give you comfort and will preserve you, but it's what's on the inside. He says, guard your heart, that's on the inside, and your mind, that's on the inside, in Christ Jesus. Instead of having unstable hearts and mind, we need to think the right thoughts. Listen to verse 8 of Philippians 4th chapter. It says, finally, brethren, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is right, and whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is of good repute, if there is any excellence, and if anything worthy of praise, dwell on these things got to have our mind in the right place. There will be a testing of our faith. But when our faith is tested, James chapter 1 verse 2 through 8 reminds us to count it all a joy. When you meet trials of various kinds, count it all a joy. Don't just look at the good times and the good things happening in your life and thank God for it and consider it a time to be happy. But Paul said, James says, count it all a joy. For you know that the testing of your faith produces steadfastness. And then let steadfastness have its full effect that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives generously to all without reproach, and it will be given to him. But let him ask in faith with no doubting, for the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea that is driven and tossed by the wind. For that person must not suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. He is a double-minded, unstable man in his ways. The psalmist in Psalms 112 verse 7 shows that believers are viewed cooperatively and individually. Psalms 112 verse 7 says, He is not afraid of bad news. That's us. We should not be afraid of bad news. Says his heart is firm, fixed, solid, trusting in the Lord. We're not wavering. His heart is steady and he will not be afraid until he looks in triumph on his adversary. And then a couple of verses of uh, Psalms 121 said, I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills, from whence cometh my help. For my help comes from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. And if he made all of this, surely he can keep little old me and you, all at the same time. Preservation is the activity or process of keeping something valued alive. Preservation is the activity or process of keeping something valued alive. Jesus came and died so that we could have eternal life. Not only does he keep something valued alive, but he keeps it intact. Together, the body of Christ, the, the Holy Spirit is working to keep us together intact, not broken all into different pieces. 
and free of decay or damage. Can you imagine somebody calling you damaged good? But if we're God's property, there's no damaged in us and we're not decaying. This body might be decaying, but the soul is being renewed day by day. The proof is in what Jesus has, is and continues to do to deliver us to an eternal life and to an eternal home. When it comes to our safety, Charles Spurgeon put it this way. He said, God has promised to keep his people and he will keep his promise. I like personally a song that Vicki Winan sung. It was titled, Safe in His Arms. These are some of the words that she said. Because the Lord is my shepherd, I have everything I need. He lets me rest in the meadow's grass. He leads me beside the quiet stream. He restores my failing health, hallelujah. And he helps me to do what honors him the most. And that's why I'm safe, safe in his arms. When the storms of life are raging and the billows roll, so glad he shall hide me safe in his arms. So glad that he shall hide me safe in his arms. Biblically, safe signifies a condition or state from which conflict, either physical or mentally, are absent. God keeps us safe by helping us to either avoid or resolve conflicts in our lives. And sometimes he shows us how to do it on our own. David, for example, when he was escaping Saul in 1 Samuel chapter 20, verse 13 and verse 21. And then when he was uh, is running from and escaping from his son, Absalom, in 2 Samuel chapter 19, verse 24 and verse 30. But many other passages refer to safety as the result of God's protection. God is a mighty good keeper. He'll protect us from all harm and danger. God is the one who will keep us. Psalms 55 and 18 said, he had delivered my soul in peace from the battle that was against me. For there, are, there were many with me. In other words, here's my personal way of seeing that verse. I, I might be totally different from you. And I'm not talking about better, I'm talking about worse. But there are many battles going on in me. And the Lord is keeping and delivering me from them all. It took a while for me to realize what Paul personally was talking about when he went to God three times to ask God to remove the thorn in his side. Now the thorn was uh, God allowing Satan to buffet at him, to keep him from getting the big head. And, and, and I'm learning that it appears to me, I, you know, that, 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 that God is getting ready to tell me that his grace is sufficient to keep me safe. Psalms 23 and 4 says, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, and thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Even his name, even God's name, is a place of refuge for those who trust him. Proverbs 18 and 10 says, The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous man runs into it and it's, is safe. 
God loves us so much because we are so valuable to him. John 3.16 said, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but shall have everlasting life. Even we protect and keep safe what or whoever is of value to us. God demonstrated his care for us one Friday when in his son he hung, bled, and died. They buried him in a borrowed tomb. But early the third day morning he rose with all power in his hand. We are of so much value to God that he gave his only son to die so that we could live. There's no greater love than a friend that will lay down his life. And Jesus laid down his life for us. And I pray that these words will be of comfort to us in the days and weeks and months and years to come. And I'm sure the Holy Spirit will recall them to our remembrance when we feel that we've lived in such a way that will devalue us in God's sight. Jesus is constantly reminding God, remember my blood that covers his sin. And as long as we're covered by the blood of Jesus, we will be valuable to God. And God will be constantly working to get us to the point where we will bring forth much fruit. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we ask now that you would give the increase in your word and allow it to enlighten us and empower us so that we will endure in the years and life to come. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, that's it for this week, and we'll see you uh, next week. We pray uh, if it's God's will. And uh, so stay safe. Remember the uh, to practice. Uh, uh, what do they call it? Let's let's practice staying apart. Uh, and 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 uh, remember the life you saved just could be your own. And let's allow God to guide us in getting back to normal, even if it has to be a new normal. Take care. We'll see you farther on down the road. Love you. Bye-bye.